Welcome to our midweek worship service at Warren First United Methodist Church. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Are you weary? Do you want to rest? Does your life seem more frustrating than it should be, more chaotic than you think you can deal with? Well, where do you look to find rest? Where do you turn and why? We're going to investigate that question today. Uh, a while back, uh, uh, in a class that I was, I was leading, we, we started to talk about, all, of all things, duct tape. And someone made the assertion that the duct tape can fix anything. Uh, the cracked seat on the bicycle, a broken tennis racket, the leaky pipe, uh, uh, just to name a few. I've seen it used to fix a door handle on a car, rip, a rip in a, a tent uh, canvas, or the holes in my son's sneakers. Uh, kids will tell you it's good for rolling into a ball for your wiffle ball bat. Uh, if the ball was busted. I remember the time Karen and I were taking our very first plane trip as husband and wife the year after we were married. I had never flown before and I was a bit nervous. Our plane was going from Pittsburgh to Florida and had a quick stop in North Carolina where we switched planes. Well, there happened to be a really bad storm that night, so everything was a bit backed up at the airport. We landed there only to find out that our next flight was leaving in 10 minutes and we had to run, literally run, to the opposite side of the airport. We ran as fast as we could, just making it. I was still nervous now, out of breath, as the flight took off and we flew right, in, right away into a bunch of turbulence. The plane was rocking, lightning was flashing all around us. I looked out the window of the plane and there I saw it, a large piece of duct tape stuck on the engine outside my window. Well, we landed safely, of course, and from that moment on, I was rather certain the duct tape could, in fact, fix anything. However, there is one small problem with duct tape. After a while, it starts to tear and rip. If it gets too wet, it begins to loosen. After a while, uh, the bike seat, the tennis racket, the leaky pipe, the wiffle ball are all broken again. Duct tape is a quick fix. I'm reasonably sure uh, they went back and put new duct tape on that plane before the next flight as well. well anyway, duct tape is a temporary solution. Uh, the scripture uh, that uh, I read for you uh, today and our thought for this, this uh, moment is uh, about how our lives are very much, in a sense, covered with duct tape or Maybe that's sort of what we wish for. People are always looking for uh, quick solutions, quick fixes. Uh, you can't say, yes, I want to take control over my finances and continue spending our money on useless things. You can't say, yeah, I, I want to have a better relationship with my kids and then continue to work 80 hours a week at the office. You can't say, yes, Lord, I want to have a dynamic and growing relationship with you and continue to give him only an hour out of your week. You can't say, yes, I want to see great and awesome and powerful things happen in, in my life and in my church and in my community and then continually refuse to get involved. You see, faith commitment requires more than duct tape solutions. It requires more than quick fixes. The Gospels I believe are full of, of examples of people coming to Jesus expecting or at least hoping for quick fixes. Oh, there was the rich young man who asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus 
said, keep the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, honor your father and mother. You can almost hear the man saying, yeah, yeah, I've, I've done all that, I've done it all, hurry up, tell me what else I have to do to inherit eternal life. And, and what does Jesus say to him? One thing you lack, sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and then follow. The man went away sad, if you remember that part of the story, because he had great wealth. Or there were the temple leaders hoping to catch Jesus in a lie all the time by questioning him during different events. And if you remember, there was a specific time during, during the Passion. Uh, you have, have the, the impatience of Mary and, and Martha when their brother Lazarus had died and Jesus uh, was away and, and they, they accost him as he, as he comes back to town. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. In other words, hurry up, Jesus. Explain where you were and what you're going to do about it. Time and time again, Jesus' response is not what is expected, however, to those um, confrontations. It's always, however, what's needed. When Jesus challenges us to make a change in our lives, he, he doesn't ask us to change things that we're already doing well. Uh, maybe you spend a lot of time with your kids. Maybe you have control over your finances. Maybe you are involved in every activity in your church. Well, Jesus isn't asking you to give him those areas. Maybe he's asking you to give him some other things that are associated with them. Maybe it's your pride or your greed or your envy, your jealousy. When Jesus challenges us to change our lives, he calls us to lay down difficult areas. Instead of quick fixes, you see, the Lord Jesus is in the business of lasting fixes. Did you ever uh, live in a house long enough to see the roof with the 20-year warranty you thought was going to last for a lifetime have to be replaced? Maybe even more than once. It's almost impossible to find anything that, that will really last. Ever go to the store to buy batteries? Which ones do you, do, do you, do you end up purchasing? The ones that say long-lasting. But you put them into the, the radio or the CD player or, or the, any type of digital camera or anything else for that matter, and the next thing you know, you're replacing them. It's almost impossible to find things that will really last. You see, friendships don't last. Job security doesn't last. Houses don't last. Our health doesn't last. It's almost impossible to find anything that lasts. But did you catch that word almost? You see, I, I, I was able to find one thing that will last. In the book of 1 Peter 1.25, it says, The word of the Lord will last forever. Jesus, talking to his disciples in Matthew 24, 35, says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will last forever. In a world filled with people who are empty and broken, people who have their lives held together with duct tape, we still find hope for a lasting solution. The only thing to do now is to put the lasting fix into effect in our lives. Now, how do we do that? Again, Hebrews. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. How do we put lasting fixes into effect in our lives? We do it by throwing off everything that hinders and the sin that entangles. We do it by fixing our eyes on Jesus. Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. When we do those things, it gives us strength to not grow weary and not lose heart. It gives us strength to finish the race that's marked out for us. What if we lived our lives truly convinced of the fact that God was watching us, 
Not only that God was watching us all the time, but, but God in Christ was right there with us to make a difference. There's a wonderful legend concerning the quiet years uh, of Jesus' life prior to his ministry. You know, that, that time between the, the birth of Jesus and the, that story of him in the temple as a young boy and then the years uh, before his, his death, those three years of ministry. There's this big gap. We talk about it as the quiet years. Well, the legend claims that Jesus becomes a carpenter. And Jesus the carpenter was uh, one of the master yoke makers in the Nazareth area. People came from miles around for a yoke, hand carved and crafted by Jesus, son of Joseph. When customers arrived with their team of oxen, Jesus would spend considerable time measuring the team, their height, their width, the space between them, the size of their shoulders, and within a week, the team would be brought back and he would carefully place newly made yoke over their shoulders, watching for rough places, smoothing out the edges, fitting them perfectly to this particular team of oxen. That's the yoke that Jesus invites us to take. Don't be misled by, by that word, easy. The Greek word, in fact, its root, uh, speaks directly of a tailor-made yoke. In other words, not easy, but, but a well-fitting yoke. The yoke that Jesus invites us to take, the yoke that brings rest to the weary soul, is one that is made exactly to our lives and our hearts. The yoke he invites us to wear fits us well does not rub us nor cause us to develop sore spirits. It's designed for two. His yoke is always there, and it's always designed for two. Now think about that. Our yoke partner is none other than Christ himself. Running throughout all of the scripture from the beginning to the end is the theme that ours is a burden-bearing Christ. He's not just a Lord whom we burden, and we do, but a Lord who actually solicits our burdens. Consider that, if you will, he, he who would be effective must first be free from burdens. And it is Christ who frees us, frees us from our sin, fixes what he alone can completely fix, the brokenness of our lives. And in fact, he's right there with us. There's a funny story that, that I remember hearing years ago, and it, I, I, of, of all things, it's about a former Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev. He, he used to tell this story of a time uh, when there was a wave of petty theft in the Soviet Union. Well, to curtail uh, the, th the, th the, the thievery, uh, uh, the authorities put guards around all of the factories. At one timber works in Leningrad, the guard knew the workers in the factory very well and kept an eye on them. And the first evening, out comes Peter Petrovich with a wheelbarrow, and on that wheelbarrow, a great bulky sack with some suspicious things inside. All right, Petrovich, said the guard, what have you got there? Oh, I, I just have sawdust shavings, Petrovich replied. Oh, come on, the guard said. I, I wasn't born yesterday. Tip it out. And, and he, sure enough, he tipped it out, and out came nothing more than sawdust and shavings. So he allowed him to put all of it back into the, in the wheelbarrow and go home. Well, then the same thing happened the next night and the next night and the, every night of the week. And the guard finally became so frustrated, and finally, at the end of the week, curiosity became uh, overwhelming. Petrovich, he said, I know you. Tell me what you're smuggling here, and I'll let you go. And after pausing for the longest time, Peter Petrovich sheepishly looked at the guard and said, Wheelbarrows, my friend. Wheelbarrows is what I'm stealing. See, sometimes finding God can be so difficult, and, and he seems to be so far away, when in reality, he's right there, and we can't see him. Are you weary? Do you want rest? Does your life seem more frustrating than it should be, more chaotic than you think you can deal with? Well, where are you looking to find that rest? Where are you turning and why? Maybe it's time to open the eyes of your heart. Can you, can you imagine a tightrope stretched over a quarter of a mile and spanning the breadth of Niagara Falls? 
the thundering sound of the, the pounding water, drowning out all the other sounds as you watch a man step onto the rope and walk across. Well, that feat was accomplished by the, the famed acrobat Charles Blounden back in 1859. He walked 160 feet above the fall several times back and forth between Canada and the United States. A huge crowd on both sides looked on with shock and awe. Once he crossed in a sack, once on stilts, and another time on a bicycle. Once he even carried a stove and he cooked an omelet after he got halfway there. Well, on July 15th, Blondin walked backward across the tightrope to Canada and returned pushing, of all things, a wheelbarrow. Blondin's story is told that, that uh, after pushing that wheelbarrow across while blindfolded, Blondin then asked for audience participation. The crowds who had been cheering and yelling and ooing and awing, he, he had proven he could do it, and there was no doubt about it. But then he asked for a volunteer to get into the wheelbarrow, to ride across the falls with him. And it is said that as he asked, do you believe I can carry a person across in the wheelbarrow? And they all cheered yes. It was then that he posed the question, which of you will get in? And the crowd was silent. None. See, there's a difference between the crowd and the one who will get into the wheelbarrow. The crowd wants the quick fix. Those in the wheelbarrow want the lasting fix. So who is most important in your life? Well, maybe, just maybe, it should be the one yoked beside you and at the same time, the one pushing the wheelbarrow that is your life. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for your presence, and we thank you for even the challenges of our life that we know need correction. We know need to be fixed, but, but keep us mindful that we should not seek out the quick answers, but the ones that truly transform. And may the only answer that really matters be the answer that brings us into relationship with you. Bless us, O oh God, that we might be able to be a blessing to others. Walk with us, and may we, as, as we partner with you, uh, be able to do great things. We pray it all in your most precious and holy name. Amen.